things of the spirit is that, like, like a lot of the scriptures that that we don't want to go to are the very keys to allowing us to go way deeper in God. Like us guys, we don't like to hear a no answer. But I realize until you hear God's no answer and obey it, you're never going to hear his yes answer. You know, sometimes a policeman says no, or somebody else, you know, says no. People will say no, and we don't want to hear it. We want to do our own thing, you know. An ex-wife says this and that. The Holy Spirit saying no. You know, we want to do what we want to do. But and just like in life, I was talk, talking to Sean and Ruben the other day. Some of the things that I have to do in my life, the very things that are going to get me to the next phase, are the very things that sometimes I'm avoiding because I don't want to deal with it. It's hard. So I'll do all this other stuff, but I'll avoid the main thing that I need to do to get over the thing. The Holy Ghost showed me that. He's like, just face it, man. What are you, what are you, like, why are you, like, tiptoeing around this? Just deal with it. And so I'm getting better at that. Like, like, when I know i got to do something, like the thing that I don't want to do, I kind of try to focus on doing that first and then the other stuff. And so that, that way I don't avoid it, you know. But talking about scriptures, um, and looking at, at these, I was just looking at the Beatitudes. And, you know, Jesus was looking at the multitude, and he went up on the mountain, and when he was seated, his disciples came to him, and then he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. You know, these things right here are the keys to you and I going deeper than we've ever seen before, and you know, I'm a, I'm a miracle guy. I love the miracles. I love the supernatural power of God, the supernatural things of God. I've been praying for some of my relatives. And the other day, one of my nieces prayed in tongues for the first time. That they're really educated. So they looked it up in the, in the like, whatever language that it sounded like. Because they're like, oh, it sounds like this language. And they said in that language, the Lord God is awesome and mighty and he's eternal. It was like, whoa, that was really opening her eyes, you know. And so those things are cool, you know what I mean, when God was, you know, doing that kind of stuff. But more than anything, all that stuff, you've got to be close with Christ. Because when you're chasing Jesus and you're in love with Jesus, the miracles follow you. You're not following them. That's right. Okay. But, but I do like them. I enjoy it. And, and I like them because it shows the love of God to people. And it exposes um, uh, the, the unbelief in people. You know, and so that's good. You know, and uh, but but these this here is the key. Blessed are the poor in spirit, because when you're poor in spirit, then you're not prideful. And when you're not prideful, it says God resists the proud, but He gives grace to the humble. And when, when you're poor in spirit, you preach the gospel and you say, man, you know Jesus loves you, and and uh, uh, He's able to save you. You know, you you and I as a sinner, He bled for you. He can save you, and you preach that message, and somebody that's in poor in spirit, they're blood, they, 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 they say, hey, I, I know that I'm undone. I know that I'm, I'm not right. I know that I've sinned, and I want to come, and I want to put on the robes of righteousness because I'm naked. I'm shameful. I'm undone. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Why? Because they're anguish. It, you know, in many times in the Bible, you see Jesus weeping, literally weeping for people in Jerusalem. And, and the, you know, you see him weeping for the lost and broken. If you want to find Jesus, he's always where the lost and broken are. Mm -hmm. You know, you want, to, you want to have a close walk with Jesus, man, get down with where people are here hurting and go and pray for them. And the power of God will move the, and go evangelize. The, the, the Spirit of the Lord will move. Things will happen. If you want to find Jesus, man, go to the lost and broken, and that's where he is. And so here when he says, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Come on. When's the last time you had a belly weep from the deepest part of you, weeping for the lost and broken? Yeah. If it's been a while, ask the Lord to tune up and soften your heart. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so these are keys to the deeper things. Now, Many people don't aren't drawn to the poor in spirit. Like, hey, we all want to be poor in spirit. But that is a place where joy it comes in the morning, where God comes and he comforts the people that are broken and of a contrite heart. He comes to the person that says, Lord God, I need you. I can't do it myself. I'm poor in spirit. And 
they get the kingdom. Sincerity. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. And the meek are people that are, um, are yielded to God. And that's not weakness. It's Quiet weakness. strength. Blessed are those who hunger and, and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. And Smith Wigglesworth preached one time, and I didn't understand this when he said it on the tape. He said, the greatest thing that you could ever pray for somebody is the hunger of God. Mm-hmm. And I didn't, I didn't really catch that. I'm like, why? How about your, your, a triple portion of Elijah doing it or something, you know? But he was saying that. It was just a progression. Because if somebody hungers and thirsts for God, they're going to be filled with God. Amen. And then all that flows out. There's not a better place to be in life than to be filled with God. Yeah. I would rather have God than money. Yeah. Yeah. Okay? And money isn't evil. The love of money is. If you're loving money and loving not loving God, that's evil. But that's just such a slippery slope. Like when I was talking to that business guy the other night, what are you doing in the church? What's your gift to the church? Well, I think I'm going to give money. God doesn't want your money. He wants your heart. Yeah. Yeah. And I can tell, too, honestly, he probably doesn't give, to be straight with you. And if he is giving... To make up for a relationship that he lacks with Jesus, then he's under guilt, shame, and condemnation, and those, those are all tools of the devil. Hallelujah. And so much of the church isn't obeying God. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Yeah. He goes, if you left your first love, repent and do the first works. Right. Repent from where you've fallen. Yeah. It didn't say give a lot of money. No, 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 no. But if your heart is with the Lord, then you're not going to love money. It's not going to own you. And he says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, that they shall be filled. So if you pray for a man, and you say, hey, can I pray that you be hungry? And they agree with you? Listen, any human being is made in the image of God. If you can get any human being to agree with you, you can release heaven on and release God on mm-hmm. One time I was in Portland ministering, and, and three folks approached me, and I could tell all three of them were very flamboyantly gay. They were in the other lifestyle, you know? And it was down by the gay part of Portland, or the, you know, where there's a lot of gay bars and stuff. And the compassion of the Lord, you know, went out of my heart. And I gave, hey, man, I got a track about Jesus, you know, the one guy, the next guy, and the next guy. And uh, they were, the, the two guys were kind of laughing, but the last guy was like, hmm. And I saw him, like, have a, 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 an attachment or a grabbing out. And so I said, hey, can I pray for you? that you would experience the love of God. And he said, yeah. So I grabbed this man's hand, and the two other guys were like, come on, Daryl. You know, they're just like, you know, real like, hey, you know, kind of, kind of scoffing and putting it down. I said, Lord, release your love and let this man feel it. I felt the love and power of God flow out of me hit this man, and he's like, whoa! What was that? I was like, that's Jesus. And so later, when you get home, read this track, because they were pulling it, they were real fast going, right? But he's never going to forget that experience. I didn't forget it, because I felt the presence of Christ. There's nothing like it. Well, we know God is with us, but many times we don't feel it. We think we're alone. We have to read the scripture. It's like, oh, I'm with you always. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're here. Because sometimes we get lied to. We go too much by feelings. But it says, Jesus said, hey, the just live by faith. Yeah. My people walk by faith, not by sight. Sight yeah. is a sensory. You're not walking by what you touch, feel, see. It's not senses. You're walking by faith as a believer. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. That we're not affected by what you can see, taste, smell, all that. Anyways, blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Mm. I want to see God. I want to see Him. I want to see Him. There was a time that I said, Lord Jesus, I don't want you to see me. I don't want you, I don't want to see you physically, because some of my friends had seen Jesus. 
I did want to see him, but I read the scripture that if you don't see Jesus and you believe on him, you're more blessed. And then I realized, well, wait a minute, I already believed in Christ when I didn't see him. So I'm already blessed. So I was like, okay, I'll, 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 you can show up in my room. I'd like to see you. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes my logic is a little off, and the Holy Spirit's like, hey, listen to me, that's not that smart, you know. <laughs> It says here, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. That's awesome. To be a peacemaker. And we should be, if you're a believer, you should be praying for Israel, the peace of Israel, and that Palestinians and Jews wouldn't kill each other. And it says, Blessed are those who are persecuted for their righteousness' sake, for, they, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And one of the guys that I have the utmost respect for, when I heard about this man in Russia, he taught his son, he taught his son about God's creation out of Genesis, right? His son goes to the school and the teacher's talking about, you know, evolution. And his son's like, no, no, that's not true. That's not true. God created the earth. You know, that. The teacher's like, where do you hear that, my dad? So they put him in the gulag. He was there, I believe, for 50 years. What's the gulag? It's the Russian prison. prison. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I had the utmost respect when I thought, when I heard about this believer story, I was like, yeah, someday I'd like to meet him. Because they, the, the, the communist regime said, the only thing that we want to do is, they said, we make sure that you break this man and get him to renounce Christ. Mm -hmm. 50 years later and two wardens later, he was finally released unbroken and the system got broke. Yeah. Hard labor, unable to see his kids. That's a, that's a walk, brother. Yeah, they don't play. Yeah. That's, a, that's a walk with the Lord yeah. that I, um, I have the utmost respect for. Yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, you got your life, you're going to stand before the Lord Jesus Christ. His back was ripped to shreds with the cat of nine tails, the, the whip. We just went through Easter, you know, he had spikes in his hands, he bled. And every damnable thing that I ever was, all my sin, it went on Christ and he bore it. And in Romans it says, well, I was still a sinner, he died for me. And that means that whether I chose Jesus or not, he gave me a way out because of his love for me. But he never forced me. Thank you, Jesus. He just made sure that me as a human wasn't destined to, for destruction because Adam had fallen. So he took on my form and took all the damnable sin that I ever did. And one day I was praying and fasting, and I was like, God, I want more power. I want more power in the ministry. And God said, he said this to me. He said, you don't know much about my love. Hey. And I said, but I'm here, Lord. I'm here praying right now because I want fire to come out of my fingertips, you know, and I want, you know, <laughs> the miracles and this and that. And he says, no, 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 I'm not starting that with that with you. You're sideways. <laughs> you need some, you need a checkup from the neck up. You know? <laughs> but when you come to the, the school of the Holy Spirit, you don't tell him what you're going to learn. He takes you and he shows you what you need. Because sometimes the things that you think you need to learn, they're really not the things that you need to learn. <laughs> And so I was sitting there for a few days praying and fasting. I was up near Silverton and I was seeking God. And, and for a minute, I saw in my spirit Jesus hanging on a cross. And all the sin that I ever did. And I even saw child molesters and I saw rapists and I saw <laughs> watermelon head kids that are born deformed. And I saw people with AIDS, and I saw leprosy. I saw diseases of every kind go on to Christ. Amen. And I saw the Lord Jesus so deformed. When it says in Isaiah 53, he bore my sicknesses and carried my pains. Yeah. I was seeing that. And God was doing something in my heart because I, didn't, I did not want to see Jesus there. I love him. I'm so thankful 
for what he did. I don't have words, human words, to describe my thankfulness. But it was hard for me to see every damnable thing that I was hit him, deform him into such a state where you couldn't even tell he was a man. Yeah. And I looked in Isaiah there, and it says his visible appearance was far more than any man in his form, more than the sons of man. So beyond the beating and all that, and Simon had to carry the cross because it, Jesus was beaten so badly, he had this guy Simon carry the cross up to the top. Beyond all that, his death for me and his love for me was beyond even a physical uh, pain that I could never even imagine because I haven't even gone into that realm of pain. You know, I've, I've been hurt before. I've been, I had 25% of my body burned. I've, I've had some knocks. I'm sure you guys have too. But all that pain and then all the sin of the world and then Jesus saying, my God, my God, why haven't you forsaken me? So that when I stand before Jesus on judgment day, when I stand before the throne, God's not going to say to me, I forsake you, because Jesus was forsaken for me so that I wouldn't have to be forsaken. Amen. And he paid every damn full price that I could ever conjure up. And some of you guys elevate people in your life. Oh, this pastor over here, he must live a great life. No, 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 no. There's none righteous. No, not one. All have gone astray. Every one of them. The guy that I'm talking about in Russia that did 50 years, he's gone astray. Brother Yoon, if you ever read his book, The Heavenly Man, who was tortured for years in China, you lift him up here, man, he's gone astray. He had a rebellious heart. And man, he sought God more than anybody. You read his book and you won't even feel saved. But it's all about <laughs> Jesus. It's all about his blood. Amen. It's all about what he did, not in you or I. Our righteousness is filthy rags. But that's where the riches is, is returning to your first love. And so when I saw what Jesus did, you know, sometimes I could get pretty nasty. In fact, one day, he, after I was a believer, I waited outside a guy that stalked my house and told, he stole one of my sniper rifles. After I got out of the military, when I found out where he was, I went to Portland. I was stalking him. I was going to cut off one of his fingers, tie him down in a chair, and hold him until he did what's right. And I was, I was hot. I was on the next level of an unclean, un, unclean spirit, really. And so then... The Lord shows me a vision of this guy going into hell and penetrating hell. And he was a gang member and stuff, and, and I was just so mad. I was going to take... He chased me one time down there in Portland when I called him out and stuff with a machete. We were playing chicken around my car. Hit my front windshield. Slashed the hood. And just, I said, I'm going to kill him or I'm going to cut off his fingers. He's going to know that he could never do that. I was so mad about this. But I didn't want to really challenge him with a machete because he was on PCP. He was all cracked out. Okay. And me and his brothers were friends. We were friends. We come from a, a redneck town there. We were rolling. He hit his dad, his brother, and me. Stole our guns. I said, I'm taking, I'm taking him out. So I'm out there. I'm, I'm planning it all out. And I would have got away with it, too. I would have chopped his finger off. I would have got all that. But God just messed me up when I seen that vision of him going to hell. It was worse than anything I could ever deal with. I called him up. I said, listen, I don't even care about the guns. Listen, I know you did it. But listen, I had a vision of you going into hell, and I want you to know that Jesus is the answer. You need to give your life to him. I forgive you. I just let it go. I had, I had a wrong spirit. But if you get chased by a machete, and you, and you have it sometimes, you got a spirit like I did where you're, you know, a fighter, and you wrestle, and you know these guys. You're like, no, no, they're not going to get the upper. I'm taking them out. But the Lord isn't calling us to physically fight. Yeah. He's not calling men the, of this day to fight another man with a gun or machete or go crazy. He's fighting us to, to come against spiritual hordes of darkness that are taking whole generations out and having eight-year-olds do sex changes. He's calling us to get into the place of compassion and he's calling us to get into the place of, uh, of anguish to where we pray until things are moved in the spirit and people that we're going to go to hell are not going to hell because God's power goes there. He's calling us to get into the kind of love when we see the price that he paid with this, for this guy that chased me with a machete, Jesus, his whole physical form was so deformed when all my sin and his sin hit him, you couldn't even tell he was a man. And if I don't forgive this guy and I come after him in this manner, I'm putting hands on somebody Jesus bled for. Yeah. When this understanding of love came into my life, it changed me. So even people that did me wrong, I don't have a desire to really do them dirty. I don't. Because here's the thing, even people I've had to take to court that the Lord told me, work this guy over because he's a con man and he goes around churches messing with them. You've got to stop him. You've got to turn that behavior around. I'm in court, but I'm not like, oh, Lord, put the screws to him. 
I'm taking them to court. I'm winning. I'm shutting them down. But I'm praying for them while I'm doing it. And I don't have that heart posture of like, oh, man, you know, let's shank them. And <laughs> let's, let's do this. I'm not, I'm not like that. Because I'm like, hey, I just want it to be right. And I want to protect the people that are innocent. And I want to be in the military. When you're a believer, you know, some guys are like, ah, oh, you know what? I racked up, you know, 30 rag heads. I killed them at 400 yards and seen their head explode. Man, you don't get excited about that crap. You're thinking this person went to hell. This person has a family. This yeah. person, you know, it's a, it's a whole <laughs> different thing, man. Yeah. You're wanting to win the Muslims, not kill them. You kill them if they're going to blow somebody up. Sure you would. And God may have you guys kill somebody at some time, but he never would have you murdered. Yeah. You know, but most of the time there's wisdom and power of God to get out of those situations to where you don't have to take a man's life yeah. if you're in the spirit. Because they were trying to throw Jesus over a cliff, and he did some things in the spirit where he disappeared and just walked out on his first message that he was preaching. They're going to throw him off the cliff. And then either he walked through with the power of God or he just vanished. But somehow he got out of there. My friend, this brother's from Haiti. My friend ministered in Haiti. And he had to pray in the spirit for three days when the witch doctors were looking for him. They were out dead set on killing him. Reuben knows yeah. that. Bill, Bill no. Anderson. Yeah. He Six prayed. Days. And he just, the Lord disappeared him for a few days. Yeah. He, and he's a big old dude. He'd been in many street fights. You wouldn't want to fight this guy. He's a, I would use a 40, I'd use a 45 on him. You know? <laughs> you know? But no, we don't do that. That's, I'm not endorsing that. This is going on TV. That's not the kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. We're no, using the sword of the spirit and the gun. Metaphor, metaphor. metaphor. But my mom didn't raise a fool to go up against a guy that can bench press 500 pounds no. as a street fighter, you know. But anyways, he's in Haiti and they're trying to kill him and he's praying like fire three days, up three days praying. And at the end of it, people were like, where did he go? There's no place he could have gone. But God held him, protected him, preserved him. Amen. It'll do the same for you. And now Bill's still winning souls. If it was his time to go, he would have, he would have died. It's my time to go. But it wasn't. It was his time to break the power of the devil, win more souls than Haiti, even win some in the U.S. And so when we got, we got these... these uh, you know, when we got these instructions from the Lord, this is where the life is, and those little things like that. The Beatitudes. Hey, you can see it right over. No, 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 no. That's where the revival is, right there. That's where it is. You know? And so, Lord, we just ask tonight that, Lord, we know, Father God, that outside of you, we're a hot mess. Yeah. Not just a cold mess, we're a hot mess. But Lord, we know, God, that in you, God, we reign from the supernatural places in heaven. And Lord, I ask tonight, Jesus, that you would make these words alive in our heart, yeah. these beatitudes, and that, Lord, these places in the Bible, God, we would own them. Man, we would walk in them. Jesus. And Lord, forgive me, Lord, for... Uh, hypocrisy. Forgive me, Lord, for times where I put on a show. Because when I see it in other people, it makes me want to vomit. And I know that heaven vomits on that kind of stuff, too. And so, Lord, I ask God that there would be a genuine walk in the church today, Lord. Not just here and in His care, but, Lord, in Clark County, in America. God, we repent, Lord. We see the signs, God, that you threw out with the stars in the heavens and the eclipse. And God... We know that, God, you're coming soon, and we're going to you. And, Lord, um, we love you. Yes, and, God, we have a, a respect and a reverence for you. And we ask, Lord, that the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart would be acceptable to you. We ask, God, Lord, that there be a time of repentance. We ask, God, that you would help us, Father God, walk in this place, God, that, Lord, would be a really sweet fragrance to heaven. Yes. And that, Lord, that it would touch earth. And it would change things. Bend us. Change us, God, that, we, that the world would be saved. Amen. Oh, God, form us into the image of Christ, God. And we call out for it, Lord. We need you. We call for you. We, yes. we ask for your touch, Lord Jesus. And we thank you, Lord, that you're going to do it. We thank you that you're already doing it. Amen. So many of us have come a million miles. But, Lord, we understand, too, God, that we got a million miles to go. And so we thank you for that. In Jesus' mighty name. Hey, Barry, can I share something real quick? Yeah. Okay. So, hey, guys, real quick. Uh, I just want to share. You guys know about Randall the Cook. He's been texting me still nonstop about the Lord. and.